Shalom, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Ben Danun, and I'm with Sister Amy uh, Sheetreats in Haifa, Israel. Amy is an artist with Amy's Designs of Israel, and uh, good friends with Amy, and I wanted her to bring us up to date with what's actually going on in Israel. I know just the other day we reported to you guys that at 3 a.m., I believe is the time she had to run down to the uh, safe room in her place there because of the uh, sirens going off in Israel, and uh, very, very... It uh, can be nerve-wracking, no doubt, uh, when, it, when a country is under war, especially as many rockets that are being flown in by Hamas out of Gaza. And uh, now we've heard reports that some rockets have been coming in from Lebanon. I think there were three that were fired recently. Amy, what can you tell us about the things that you know of over there? Uh, well, in Haifa, on Thursday evening, well, actually very early, 3.30 in the morning, almost 3.30 in the morning, uh, Friday morning, um, we heard sirens in Haifa and thuds, so I believe the missiles were taken out. But what I understand that these were long-range missiles from Gaza called RAN TC-160. So I believe their range is 160 kilometers. And uh, we haven't had one of those fired at Haifa since then. Uh, it may be that they're holding it back or maybe they were blown up. Uh, within the, uh, from Lebanon, that happened yesterday, and um, uh, the Lebanese authorities are were pretty upset about that, and they actually um, found the person that was responsible and arrested him, but those were um, small mortar fire that was in uh, thrown to Upper Galilee. Mm. <clears throat> That's good, you know, because we know that. Uh Last time when Israel went to war with uh, with the uh, uh, is that considered Hamas in, in Lebanon as well or is that Hezbollah 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 in, in, in uh, up in Lebanon uh, it's pretty bad and even the government couldn't contain the, uh, the 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 escalated violence that was going on there and I know that's one been one of my biggest concerns is that uh, that eventually that's going to end up. <clears throat> becoming a major issue as well for Israel. And I know that uh, when um, uh, Naftali Bennett recently was on Fox News, he had expressed that uh, Israel is preparing for war with Iran and uh, that they are fully aware that when uh, they uh, launch an attack against Iran to stop the nuclear uh, program that they have and getting nuclear weapons, that they will end up uh, being engaged on multiple fronts, uh, so no doubt they're they're anticipating, in my opinion, Syria and uh, Hezbollah out of Lebanon also wanting to attack Israel. What's your thoughts on this? Well, my my thoughts are right now um, it, within Gaza, it, the PA, which is the Fatah, and and Hamas, which they've made this unity government, and there's also Islamic Jihad down there. Some say there is there are some ISIS. But right now they are in competition, um, actually between uh, Hamas and Islamic Jihad to try to make some kind of victorious move on Israel. And with all of their hundreds of rockets, thank God, uh, not one Israeli citizen has been killed. There, there have been some injuries and, and also damages to buildings and businesses, but no, no kills. Um, what I've understood is that uh, Ham Abbas is putting out possible um, desire to make a truce, asking um, the UN to get involved and Tony Blair and Egypt to get involved in this possible truce. Well, they're not seeing a victory, so of course they might want to wait till they have some kind of great explosion and victory. But of course they want a truce because they're being slaughtered. But Israel is, you know, if we go for a truce, that will not be good. We, we don't need another round of this happening again as they re-weapon -re themselves. Uh, all of these bombs, missiles, grenades, and all of their ammunition has come in because we've given the, the people, so-called Palestinians, their, their land and ability to fend for themselves, not fend for them, but to, to live within their borders and, and have, their own, have their own government. Well, they've smuggled many of these missiles have come in from Iran and Syria, also from Assad, uh, Bashir Assad. So, and then, and then on the other hand, um, you have Islamic Jihad and Hamas that 
they're against Assad, even though Assad's the one that, that supplied them the missiles. If, if we go in for a truce right now, um, we will just be, um, all the gains that Israel has made at all will just be nullified very, very soon, as soon as they just gather up their weaponry again to point on Israel again. And we can't, we can't have that. We can't afford that. So <clears throat> that's exactly right. And you know, one thing too, sis, that, that I, I know that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu in Hebrew, he gave a, uh, a speech uh, uh, directly to uh, Hamas in Gaza because we know that, uh, I forget exactly when it took place, but I know that uh, Israel pulled out of Gaza, allowed the, uh, uh, the, the militant group to, to have self autonomy. And yes. uh, that's, and, and as uh, Naftali Bennett has pointed out, that has only caused us. Uh, a tremendous amount of uh, problems in Israel. In fact, Neftali Bennett uh, said it turned it into a hell. Just the job. We need to go in. It looks like we are doing, going to go in for the, um, do the groundwork, send our ground troops in. We have um, 40,000 reservists that have been called up and they're ready and they're singing, rejoicing, praying there and just waiting to go in. They're very motivated. What needs to do? What needs to happen? The government, the armed forces, the IDF, they know that the targets, not all the targets could be eliminated um, by aerial... Um, Air campaign. By an aerial campaign. So we need to go, you know, this needs to happen. Your, your question about what do I see about happening around Israel with Syria and Lebanon. Well, we at least need to take out the terrorists hunkering in our south, especially now that they have long-range missiles and they can hit about 80% of Israel from the south all the way up to Haifa, and maybe they can even upgrade as far as the upper north. We need to at least eliminate that so that we can be strong and not be surrounded by every side, including the south. But saying that, unfortunately, we also have, um, within the state of Israel, we have Israeli Arabs that see themselves as Palestinians that have been riding in Akko, in Yafo, in different, in different um, towns, including Jerusalem, and making havoc, havoc on the population and the people, waving Palestinian flags. So it's... It's going to be bad, but at least if we could somehow eliminate or make smaller the threat in the, in the South. Absolutely. And, uh, <clears throat> my, and, and I'm sure, I, know, I mean, it's not like uh, the Prime Minister and the, the generals in Israel are not fully aware of the other possible conflicts around the country. I know that when they're doing a ground invasion in one place, I'm sure the borders in the North are also secure as well, uh, because easily... And, 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 and I, when I say easily a, a conflict could escalate, um, I also realize that um, the Prime Minister knows this, and this is actually what Abbas would like to see happen. I mean, I know that he's supposed to be the, the president that's more looking for peace, but, uh, but you know, what's kind of interesting is he, you know, he, he's wanting to get peace, he's wanting the, 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 the fight to stop. But yet, at the same time, on the Temple Mount, uh, the Palestinians are, are having a party up there as the Gazas rain in from, uh, excuse me, as, as the rockets rain in from Gaza. Uh, and, and really and truly, I mean, it's a disgrace as it is that the Palestinians are on the Temple Mount. I mean, to me, I think they should actually be ousted completely from the Temple Mount. Uh, but I don't think it should be permitted that they be allowed to have a, 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 a pep rally, as, uh, so to speak, on the Temple Mount. Wouldn't there be fireworks if they were ousted from the temp temper ma Temple Mount uh, talking about inciting them? I mean, that would be a great incitement on Israel's part. Um, unfortunately, it would be seen that way, but it is Israel's Temple Mount. And exactly. They were given sovereignty. Exactly. And, and which brings they up given one... sovereignty by a, by a secular government when it was taken. Yes. Well, you know, the other thing that that brings to mind as well, and I'd like to just uh, want to ask you one last question here, and then we'll, I'd like to bring you back on again in the near future, uh, sister. And, uh, but the, the, um, <clears throat> the issue with King David's tomb, 
Uh, I know that it was just recently reported in uh, uh, Arut Shiva that uh, there's a new status quo. Uh, Rabbi Cook uh, is very upset. He's the one that actually reported that when it came out of a meeting uh, that now the Christians are being allowed. Uh, when they say Christians, I believe it's the Catholic Church who's, who's behind all of us. Uh, so to me, it's not true Christians. True Christians stand behind Israel. They respect the sovereignty of Israel. They respect uh, the beliefs of the Jewish people, and they don't trample on that. That's what true Christians are all about. Uh, but the Catholic Church themselves, uh, from what was reported in Arut Shiva, uh, that's Israel national, Israel's national news, they were quoted as to saying that the Vatican uh, or the Catholic Church there in Israel recently had uh, again ousted the Jewish believers from King David's tomb and held an eight-hour prayer vigil inside the tomb itself. Well, not actually, I guess, where the marker is, but again, in the, the, the room, the corridor, just as you're going in. And I know Rabbi Cook was very concerned because of the effigies. Uh, we know that they, they use a crucifix uh, with a dead uh, Jesus on it. Uh, Idolatry. To, where there's the diaspora yeshiva right there in that very building, and this is Jewish land. This is uh, the within the the Jewish old city. This is not the Temple Mount that can be just trampled on and taken by Muslims, Catholics, whomever wants to. This is Jewish territory, sovereign land, Israel. I I do not see. I do not understand the where they get this right to do that, unless it's part of some kind of false peace plan that might be coming worked up by the Vatican. The Vatican is not a friend of Israel. I know that many Jews, Israelis, would like to think that they can maybe broker peace and everything could be great and we can all sing Kumbaya and stand hand by hand, the Christian, the Jew, and the Muslim. but. The Vatican is not part of peace. Absolutely, absolutely, sis. I can't agree with you more. And uh, and like you said, I believe that they're trying to bring in a false peace. It really and truly, when I see the the uh, the documents are written in 1993 uh, from from the uh, Vatican and the, the agreement they were trying to make. Um, at that point, there when that agreement was done. One of the things that uh, uh, Shimon Perez had m mentioned that he wanted to see was that an international community would come into Israel, uh, into Jerusalem, and and basically you could see the the works of trying to bring to, to bring a, 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 a the millennium reign so to speak without having Mashiach. You know, Israel is looking for Mashiach to come, and without Mashiach coming, you're not going to have a millennial reign. That's right. That's right, Stephen. Um, and the only peace, man can make its efforts. And and I know that God is is with us, with the believers, with the Israelis, with the land of Israel. And but I but I'm sure He sits back and laughs because man man can make their plans and God laughs. Um, he's not going to give His seat as Prince of Peace over to any other man. And it, I, I believe we're running, we're coming to the days where, um, unfortunately, it has to go come through trouble, with fire, pain, and floods and storms. But we are going ahead towards the days where we, our people, will be saying Baruch Adonai and Amen. looking Amen. up and calling out to our, our Mashiach, our Lord, and recognizing that He's Yeshua. And he is Amen. our Prince of Peace. Amen, sis. God bless you. And thank you for being with us. Uh, again, uh, Amy uh, Shitritz from Haifa. Uh, and uh, check out her website. She has some incredible artwork. Uh, God bless you, sis. Stay safe. Our prayers are with you. And um, we'll actually, this newscast will probably go live in a couple of hours. I just want to thank you, Stephen, and thank you, all your listeners, and ask you to pray, especially for our, our young soldiers, men and women in the field, and for their families. They are courageous. They're going out, and some could, God forbid, lose their lives, that, that the Lord would meet them there, that there would be hosts of angels, and that God would be fighting for us. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Shalom, God my bless. sister. God bless you. Good night. Shalom. That was Sister Amy uh, in Haifa, and what a privilege to be able to speak with her. 
and to uh, to get an update of the 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 things that are happening there on the ground in Israel. And uh, as Sister Amy had pointed out so beautifully at the end there about praying for the soldiers, and uh, several things just went through my mind when she said that. One, my heart was just really moved. And the reason being is because I realized that praying for the Israeli soldiers and the battles that they're fighting, just like when Joshua came in and God commanded him to take the land and to kill off the inhabitants, they really need our prayers, and Israel needs our support more than ever. Uh, as uh, Sister Amy had pointed out, the Vatican is, is interested in trying to broker a peace, a false peace, and, and so beautifully and so eloquently as she put it, that uh, the, there's only one seat uh, in, in Israel for King David, and that is for, for the Mashiach. Uh, and yes, Amy is a believer, and, uh, and, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, in fact, when uh, the, it was announced that uh, the Pope would be given a, a seat at, at King David's tomb, uh, to me it was, it, was a, it was an outward sign letting us know that there is a false Mashiach. Uh, he's trying to sit on the throne of David as the son of David, and he is not the son of David. But this is the reason that was done, was because of that. Let's continue on in other news. But the Boston Globe is reporting online, and this report came out on June 22nd, 2014. I mentioned to you the other day about uh, the blood of, uh, as they call him, St. John Paul II, uh, the former pope who was recently elevated to sainthood by Pope Francis. And uh, <clears throat> at any rate there, they have a vial of his blood that is circulating around the United States. And this article here says Catholics still feel, t feel touch of John Paul II, a vial of blood rem, uh, reminds faithful of church's newest saint. Uh, the, the Reverend uh, Richard Clancy held items to be touched to a relic of St. John Paul, the Paul II for blessing. The relic was in Boston this weekend at Holy Cross Cathedral during a U.S. tour. Uh, Mary uh, Sachtila was a teenager when Pope John Paul II came to Boston in 1979. Though she would not understand his legacy until much later, she felt his aurora immediately that day. It, it was just like a magnet, said the 54-year-old uh, uh, Sictuant resident. I may be pronouncing that wrong. It's um, S-C-I-T-U-A-T-E, who also uh, witnessed John Paul, uh, Paul's 2011 uh, uh, bit, bitification in Rome. You could just feel his presence, his holiness, uh, now, decades later, she, she has come to see him once more, this time in the form of a small glass vial holding his blood. Uh, so, so much for the blood of Yeshua. Uh, I guess that doesn't really matter anymore. Now they have the blood of uh, Paul, St. Paul, uh, uh, the Pope, excuse me, Pope Paul, uh, Pope John Paul II, I'll get it right in a second, uh, and it just only goes to show now the importance of this, and the reason why we're bringing this out in the news broadcast is because the Vatican is lifting up the blood of a human being, but to them, you have to remember, the Pope is the vicar of Mashiach, he is a vicar of Christ. That uh, vial is to be on display this coming week in New York. In fact, I believe it is this weekend. I'll kind of uh, update that news there on that. And there are reported that hundreds, if not thousands, of people are actually going there to be able to be a part of that. Also, in, uh, in other news as well, we will be bringing you up to date in concluding the news broadcast here. We'll be bringing you up to date uh, later this week. In fact, Sunday, uh, uh, Yom Rishon, isn't it interesting? Sunday, S-U-N-D-A-Y, on the Gregorian calendar. If you ever wondered why uh, the, the Vatican enforced a Sunday rule, well, the very name ought to make it clear. They worship the sun god. Uh, it's kind of like an ancient Egyptian uh, cult, isn't it? But anyhow, uh, on Yom Rishon, on the first day of this week here, uh, we'll be... In Barry's book, his latest book, Save Israel, uh, we'll be talking about the war and the, the events that are going on there in the Middle East. Anyway, I'm Stephen Ben Danun, Baruch Hashem, and good evening. You're watching. Thank you for watching Israeli News Live.